but we kept on holding. And we don't know what tomorrow might bring, but we're going to keep on holding. He brought us this far, and he won't turn us loose now. And we die here. Amen. God, our Heavenly Father. Thank you for another day. Mm -hmm. My Father, thank you for the beginning of another year. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, talk to us today. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity to stand before you and before your people. Yes, In the name of Jesus, speak to us that we may hear. Yes. But thus saith the Lord. Yes. And it is in the name of Jesus that we ask you. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, if you don't mind this morning, let's turn back to the book of Acts, the third chapter, that Reverend Baden read for this morning. He read for us the first through the tenth verse. If you don't mind, let's, for the sake of emphasis, look at verse five and verse six. All right. Acts chapter three, verse five. And verse six. And he gave heed unto them, expecting expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, yes. but such as I have I give thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes. Church, if you don't mind this morning, I'd like to use for a subject, this might be the day. Yes. With the glow of the Pentecostal fire still burning warm in the heart, Peter and John joined the parade of people on the way to the temple for the hour of prayer. Yes, yes. It was a Jewish tradition that three times a day that folks would cease from all of their activities and make themselves to the temple for the hour of prayer. Yes. Perhaps this custom came because Daniel prayed three times a day. Yes. Or maybe the custom started because David, in the 55 number psalm, verse 17, said, Morning, evening, and at midday, will I pray and cry loud, and he will hear my voice. Yes. To fulfill whatever custom, habit, or rule, Peter and John found themselves on the way to the temple for prayer. Mm -hmm. Members must have flooded their hearts because the text tells us it was the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. You Bible readers remember the ninth hour. Yes, yes. It was the ninth hour when that tragic triumphant hour. Uh -huh. It was the ninth hour when that midday midnight darkness Covered cavalry like darkness covers the shoulders of cavalry. It was the ninth hour. Yeah. It was the ninth hour when our master completed his work of redemption and cried out, fellow Lisa, it is finished. It was the ninth hour. Yeah. Now while making their way to the temple, they encountered an unexpected opportunity to witness. Uh -huh. This opportunity presented itself in the form of a lame man. Yes, yes. His problem became their problem. His hurt became their hurt. Uh -huh. His pain became their pain. Yes. Lord have mercy on those who seek to minister, but yet never feel the hurt and pain of those that they seek to minister to. Uh -huh. Let, let's look at the crippled man in the text. First of all, we find out that he had a serious health defect. Not only was it a serious health defect, it was a congenital, congenital heart uh, health defect in the fact that he had it from birth. Yeah. Yeah. And not only did he have it, and, and if you look at the fourth chapter, very next chapter, verse 22 tells us that he had this infirmity for over 40 years. Yeah. He was so notable there that all Israel knew if you just mentioned the word lame man, they knew who you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. 40 years of depending on someone else to carry. Mm -hmm. 40 years, and he could do nothing about it. There was no, there was no uh, 
Cripple Children Hospital at that time. Uh-huh. There was no pediatrician for the parents to carry him through. Come on, come on. There was no rehabilitation clinic to equip him for life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All he could do was sit by his window and watch the parade of life pass him back. Yeah. Not only did this man have a, a serious defect, he also had a sad dependence. Uh-huh. The text said that he had to be carried. No one in this man's life, uh, everyone that, that came across this man had to carry him. And not only, not only was he a burden to himself, he'd become a burden to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And as he grew from boyhood into manhood, that burden got even bigger to those that was carrying him. Because of his serious defect, he couldn't find a job. No fisherman would uh, hire him to help bring in the kick. No farmer would hire him to help bring in the harvest. Mm-hmm. No army wouldn't hire him and put a weapon in his hand to help defend the country. Mm-hmm. All he could do was sit and watch. Yeah. Yeah. Something can happen to you, brothers and sisters, when you have to depend on somebody else Amen. to do for you. Yeah. And if you're not careful, Somebody said that the that, that, uh, soul and the body live so close to each other that one seems to catch the other's disease. Uh-huh. If, you don't, if you don't watch it, if your body gets sick, sooner or later, your mind starts to feel the pain and gets sick. Yeah. 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 No help, no hope. Yeah. That was this man that do. It has destroyed his total outlook on life. Something within you may very well die when you depend on others to do for you. Right. You lose that initiative. You, you, you lose that uh, 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 your self-dependence. Your mobility becomes somebody else's mobility. Your ability uh, and your initiative is assassinated because you have no help and no hope. Not only did this man have a serious defect, not only did he have a sad dependence, but he also... Uh, <coughs> He also had uh, uh, his his dependence was also to create pity for those who daily passed by at the gate. Yes, yes. He cried on, on. Now, before we get too hard on this crippled man, it's hard to be optimistic when everything the battle is falling apart. Uh-huh. It's hard to be up be upbeat. When you're hungry, your family is hungry, there's no money in your pocket. All right. All right. Now, this man's condition is an illustration of all of us. Oh, he's a cameo of the plight of humanity. How, uh, he's a demonstration of a disabilitated malady that we call sin. Yes, yes. All of us, do, do you remember the Old Testament character, Jonathan? Uh-huh. He was King Saul's son. He was David's friend. But the character of Jonathan had a son called Mephibosheth. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. A nurse that was taking care of uh, young Mephibosheth, when war broke out, in her haste, trying to get him uh, to safety, she stumbled and she failed. Yeah. Leaving Mephibosheth <coughs> crippled. <laughs> Mephibosheth was crippled because of a result from a fall. Uh-huh. We like Mephibosheth, a victim of a fall when man chose to disobey God. Yeah. We felt physically, we felt spiritual, we felt mentally, we felt emotionally, all because of a fall. Uh-huh. Go ahead, go ahead. And instead of being carried by Christ, we found ourselves trying to be carried by humanism, intellectualism, and any, any, anything that would carry. But my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you today, that humanism, intellectualism, can only carry you so far and then they will put you down. Yes. 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 Now, and this man also, if you notice, his strategic location. Uh-huh. He lay at the gate called Beautiful yeah. at the very entrance of the temple. Uh-huh. Now, this man was crippled, but he wasn't crazy. Uh-huh. It was at the entrance of the gate where people, all Israel would pass by and he would call that arm. Yeah. Uh, and let's look at the gate. Now, first of all, we have a beautiful gate. Uh, the, the historian Josephus 
said that not only was it a beautiful gate, but said it was nine gates. All right. He said it was 75 feet high and 60 feet wide, mm -hmm. and it, it was covered in bronze. And when the sun was shining on it, it was brilliant and dazzling in its appearance. All right, that's what's on the gate. Now let's look at what's on the ground. Here you have this poor, pitiful, crippled, poor man laying on the ground. Yes. And the idea is that, uh, that it's a tragic contrast because on one side, you, 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 have, uh, you have wealth, and down on the ground, you have woe. Right. On one side, you have splendor, and on the ground, you've got poverty. Uh -huh. And the interesting thing about it is they are coexisting in the very shadow of the temple. Yeah. And Josephus also went on to say that uh, the gate was given by a wealthy Alexandrian, and he, he said that it was shaped in, uh, like a band which represented uh, God, uh, Israel, in, in God's Vineyard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And brothers and sisters, uh, we have a tendency, uh, even though they were coexisted right next to each other, we have a tendency to deal with life problem from wrong distance. Yes. Mm -hmm. We watch TV, this nation, all we talk about is what's going on in Africa. They try to deal with the Ebola outbreak long distance. They're trying to deal with all of the uh, child slavery in Somalia, in, uh, Somalia, and in, in, in Syria, in Europe, long distance. Mm -hmm. We talk about all of the problems that's going and the scandals going on in Washington, Ferguson, Missouri, St. Louis, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. long distance. Uh -huh. But my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that if God cannot use us and grab a heel. Right. If God can use us in Hartsfield, right. if God can use us in Gallatin or Nashville, right. then he won't be able to use us in Africa. Right. 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 He went on uh, to say that the master didn't tell Peter and John that I want you to heal the hurts of humanity all the way from there to Bathsheba. I just want you to heal those that I allowed to cross your path. Yeah. And this man that's laying at the beautiful gate is in your path. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this man dared to bring his sickness to church. Are we here? Uh, it, uh, the, the people moved around him as, as if he wasn't even there. Yeah. Is the church of Jesus Christ guilty of walking with the crowd? He who would conduct the orchestra would turn his back to the crowd. Yeah. In other words, that uh, the, the church said, let a sick man stay sick. Yeah. Uh, and they have a theology that, that say, if you are sick, you are not even allowed into the temple. Uh -huh. And they, they also were said that uh, Jesus, they accused him because he came with a different theology. They said that he was in league with the devil when he started trying to heal folks. Yeah. But Jesus had this, and they called him Beelzebub. If you remember back in John, in the ninth chapter, uh, they tried to trap Jesus, and they asked him, uh, when the, uh, uh, the blind man, they said, Master, who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus said, neither one, said, neither one. He said, this man was made blind that God may be manifest in his sickness. Yes, yes. And, and, and uh, this church was also a theatrical church. Uh, in other words, y'all know what a theater is, where you put on a mask and you pretend. It was a theatrical church. It had it, it relied on Judaism. It had no power to heal the sick. They, it found him sick, it left him sick. Yeah. Found him a beggar, left him a beggar. Found him lame, left him lame. It had no power to produce life. Uh, now let's say something about the Christian in the church. Verse 1, Peter. Uh, Peter and John. Verse 3, Peter and John. Verse 4, Peter. Verse 6, Peter. To whom was this man a problem? He wasn't a problem to Judaism. Judaism said, if you're sick, stay sick. Uh, it wasn't a problem for the crowd. The crowd just looked at it and moved on back. Uh -huh. 
This man was just a problem to those who had spent time with Jesus. Yeah. He wasn't a problem for anybody else. Uh, is it possible uh, to care about, it, it is possible to care about the causes of humanity without being concerned about the causes of Christ. But it's impossible to be concerned about the causes of Christ and not be concerned about the hurt of humanity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter said, look on the, look at the confidence. What he was really saying is, look on me, mimic me, follow me as I follow Jesus. Can we say that? Is there anybody in this church this morning that said, look at me, look at my lifestyle? Is there anybody here that say that my testimony will lead you to the cross? My character will introduce you to the Christ. Peter said, look on us. And when he said, look on us, the man, the very next verse tells us, said, he raised the man expectation. And I know I'm right because he said, he looked up expecting, verse 5. Said he looked up expecting something. It's dangerous, my brothers and sisters, to raise a man expectation. Well. Because when you raise a man expectation, it's laid up on you to provide what you advertise. Yes, Especially a man whose all hope is gone. Yes. Peter said, oh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about raising your expectations because I know a man that can, can deliver what I'm advertising. Yes. And look at this look at this confession. He said, silver and gold have I none. He said, oh, I don't have any silver and I ain't got no gold. But I got some stuff called such as I have. And I'll give to you. Notice, before we leave that note, uh, he wasn't intimidated by what he didn't have. Just, uh, you know, sometimes we become, especially uh, black folks, sometimes we become intimidated and think we are supposed to be sanitary citizens because we didn't have so-called advantages that other folks had. My brothers and sisters, use what you got. Do what you can, and God will bless you for it. Just bloom where you boss. Bloom where you're friendly. Uh, uh, some of us uh, uh, might have heard of uh, Thomas Aquinas. He was uh, a historian and a philosopher uh, and teacher of the day and writer. And uh, a rumor said that, uh, that Thomas Aquinas went to visit Pope Emerson II. It said the Pope invited him in and uh, uh, showed him all around and, uh, and and all the wealth they had and all of the all of the money. And he said, uh, Thomas, look at all this wealth. Said no longer can the church say silver and gold have I none. Mm -hmm. He looked around and, and said, Your Holiness, you are absolutely right. But neither can the church say, in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. We've lost our focus. We've lost our emphasis yes. and failed to make the main thing the main thing. Yes, sir. And the main yes, thing is exalting the Savior, edifying the saints, yes, sir. evangelizing the lost, and elevating society. That's right. the main thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Peter didn't give the man what he wanted. He gave the man what he needed. Peter, uh, the man was wanting a donation, but he needed delivery. He was wanting money, but he needed a miracle. Yeah. We who stand in the uh, full pit, Reverend Bacon, it's our obligation not to give the people what they want, but to give them what they need. Yeah. And what they need is an authoritative, presentation right. of the word of God that glorified Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And said, so, uh, Peter stretched out his right hand. His right hand, not just in his any hand. He stretched out his right hand. Oh, y'all Bible readers know about the right hand, don't you? Right. right hand Jesus is on the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. That's the right hand. The right, the right hand is a symbol of power and authority. The right hand. Now, if you notice, thy hand belongs to Peter, but the power belongs to Christ. Yeah. Uh, all we pray, I say, oh, the Lord can do it. Yes, the Lord can do it, and the Lord wants to do it. But every now and then, we can't give him a helping hand. Yeah. I can't close the bill. We talked about the privilege of the church. We, we talked about uh, the condition of, of the church. 
I can't, and the Christians in the church, I can't close the door and say something about the price of the church. So Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up and said, in the name of Jesus Christ of yes. Nazareth, Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes. Church, there's power in his name. Yes. Now when Peter called on the name of Jesus, supernatural power started to flow. It flowed. Peter said, quick, Lord, right here. So right here. And Peter reached out and touched the man. And, and, and the power went through Peter's arm and touched the man on his leg. And it shot down and came out through his feet. And the Bible said he jumped up, uh, leaping right. and walking right. and praising God. Yeah. If God does something for you, my brothers and sisters, it's no harm to praise him. If God has yeah. gave you a second chance, that's no harm to say hallelujah. Yeah. If God has brought you from a mighty long way, yeah. it's no harm just to praise his name. Right. And if you know, yes. uh, he went in, the man went into church, walking and leaping. Brown here, don't lose your leap. He went here walking and praising God. Yeah. He was he was carrying on such commotions. He was conversing so bad that somebody in the church said, shh, shh, we don't act like that. You must have been here before. He said, you're right. I haven't been in church before. But your problem is, you've never been lame before. For four years, I had to stand together. For four years, I was crippled. For four years, somebody had to carry me. Yes, I'm going to praise my God. He said, Yo, your only problem is, uh, I met that man, and that man, uh, it wasn't Peter that touched me, it was the hand of God. Yeah. I like the song yeah. right, it said, said, somebody touched me. Yeah. It, it, it must yeah. have been, yeah. it must have been the hand of God. My yeah. uh, brother, sir, I can't close with what I'm trying to tell you. If God has ever done something for you, it's all right to say thank you. Yeah. If God has done anything for you, all right. it's all right to say hallelujah. Yeah. If God has done anything for you, yeah. it's all right to say 